Hello everyone, this is Shamsi and welcome to the ship build guide video. One of the most common comments in my build guide videos for ships is how many of each element type I used in the build. And the answer will vary depending on your talents. If you have better piloting and placement talents than I do, you'll need fewer elements than I used. If you have worse talents than I have, you'll need more elements than what I've used. The important questions when it comes to ship building rather than say industry building where you can accurately tell people this is how many of each unit you'll need. The important bit for shipbuilding is right here, the atmospheric flight engineering report. So today we're going to talk through that and talk about what benchmarks of performance do you want to hit, however many elements that happens to take you with the state of your current talents in the game. And to do that, we're going to build a basic new player market shuttle for taking ore to sell in the market. I also want to announce a giveaway. In honor of hitting 420 subs on YouTube, which is the most auspicious and exciting number, uh, we're giving away Pumpkinella over here. So if you want to enter that, uh, head over to the Discord, which is in the description of this video below. Type any comment you like into the channel called Pumpkinella Giveaway, and you'll be entered into the draw. That's going to be uh, open for another two weeks from the date of release of this video. Uh, the other channel announcement I need to make is Blueprints. People have been asking for this for a while. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I finally put down a demonstration warp cell facility able to make 116 warp cells a day, and I'm not going to set up a dispenser or mess around with rights or anything like that, but I stream every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday from 7.30 p.m. London time, and for the first uh, you know, 15 minutes or so of every stream, I'm going to be hanging around here, if not for the whole stream, and you can come on by, show off your ships, hang out, and pick up whatever blueprints you want, be it to, to this facility, others that I'll be putting down for blueprints, or any of my ships that you might want. Uh, except for this pyramid, you can have a blueprint of this, but when I finish perfecting it. I'm still getting the design right. When it's right, anyone can have a blueprint of it for free to make their own pyramids. Um, Finally, just a quick note to say, if you do enjoy this video or find it useful, please do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It is an immense help. So, let's get straight into the build guide of the ship. Let's talk about talents and their impact on elements in a ship. There are two types of talents that impact how elements perform. On this character here, uh, as you can see, I have zero piloting talents. I have nothing trained. So for the purpose of this demonstration, if you have no talents, you'll be getting exactly the same results. But that's unrealistic to expect you to have no talents at all, because as you can see, the first two ranks of any piloting talent don't take very long to train at all. So it won't take you long to at least get some talents in and perform better than I'm able to in this demonstration. But uh, let's talk about those two different types of talents. The first is raw handling. So because of talents that you have on your character, any ship that you pilot, you will get more performance out of elements. So for instance, if I have talents invested in say atmospheric brake thrust control, I get 10% more power to my atmospheric brakes because I'm the one piloting the ship. So if I was on my uh, pilot character, I would have 40% more power to my atmospheric brakes because I have four levels in that talent. And so air brakes are much more effective, which means I need fewer of them. The second type of talent that uh, affects um, uh, elements is the talent of the person that built the ship in building the element. So again, on my pilot, if I'm the one on my pilot character that builds the air brake, puts the air brake on the ship, I get 10% more power per point here. So again, I would have 40% more power to my atmospheric brakes because my pilot character is the one that built it. And that bonus applies whoever happens to be piloting the, air, uh, the aircraft. So if I was doing this on my pilot character, I would have 40% more power for my air brakes when I built it, and I'd have 40% more power to my air brakes while flying the ship. So as you can see, if I use a certain number of air brakes on that character, if you don't have those same talents, if you build your own ship and operate it, you won't get the same power that I get out of those same elements. So uh, with that out of the way, let's talk about uh, benchmarks. now. I'm going to build the ship 
and come back and as we're going along talk about the benchmarks that I'm aiming for as I'm building the ship. Now, before we get started, let me talk about Sagacious's build guide video. Uh, as per his guide, what I've done is I've put the container of the ship down first, filled it with as much weight as I wanted to carry, which is 250 tons. And then when I add elements, I'll get an accurate report of how the ship will perform because the max thrust of the ship, the high altitude, low altitude lift, etc., the ship's ability to perform is directly impacted by what the ship weighs. So as I add more elements to the ship, the weight of the ship itself will go high, higher. So I need to factor that in. But I have 252 tons of cargo. So as I'm getting live readouts of the statistics of the ship, they are bearing in mind the cargo that it is carrying. So if I built the ship and hit the benchmarks that I want to hit with the weight in the container already, I know that the ship will be able to fly with that amount of weight as its max capacity. I'm going to come back and talk about um, <clears throat> Sagacious's video at the end, but uh, suffice to say, we filled the container with the weight we wanted to carry so now our atmospheric flight report will be accurate and we'll start uh, with our engines now um, this isn't uh, centered exactly uh, but uh, this is in the middle uh, further down uh, so uh, the core is moved it's not in the middle the container is moved it's no longer in the middle but we want it to sit fairly low in the ground because we want to put elements up above. This is an extra small dynamic core, so space is tight. And uh, I do want it to move back just a little bit there. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to put two atmospheric engine larges down. Now, um, we sometimes get better performance uh, by placing medium engines down because they weigh less and so on. Uh, the large engines are as heavy as it gets for atmospheric engines. But given that we are hauling 252 tons of cargo, it is necessary to have the power of large engines. And if you only have two of them, uh, it should be perfectly uh, powerful enough to give us what we need. Now the benchmark we are going for, for max thrust, which is the thrust of these engines here, is anything above say 1.3 Gs. Now do remember that as we add elements, those elements weigh something. And so the amount of thrust we're able to get from these two engines will go down as we add more elements. So when I'm starting at 1.4, I know that I'm not going to go below 1.3 by the time I finish building. So these two engines are enough. So first and foremost, max thrust, you want to be above, say, 1.3 Gs to be able to pilot comfortably. Uh, so that's that let's next go with our high altitude lift and for our high altitude lift we want uh, wings and for my wings i'm gonna not place wings i'm gonna place stabilizers the reason i'm placing stabilizers is because this is going to be a heavy ore hauling ship and the stall angle of the uh, stabilizer is much higher than that of the wing, so it's easier to pilot. The um, trade-off is we're going to be able to fit fewer of them here, but there are other places that we can stack them. There was a, a post on Reddit uh, showing an early aircraft with a whole bunch of small wings, and unfortunately, that is an accurate representation of the state of the game sh uh, with the ship design right now. We need to stack uh, wings. Stacking smalls and extra smalls is most efficient, but given that we are lacking in room, uh, I'm going to stick with smalls rather than extra smalls so we can get as much uh, power out of the area we're going to stack the uh, wings in as possible. So. That's one side, and with half of my wings placed, I can see that I have 0.86 Gs of uh, high altitude lift. Now, that tells me this is not going to be enough, but that's okay. We can snap a few more to our vertical um, uh, stabilizers uh, for a little bit of more lift. Now, vertical stabilizers turn your ship while in flight. 
uh, to move in the uh, direction that uh, uh, you are uh, pointing. So, uh, sorry, let me get rid of my chat there. Uh, to move in the direction that you're pointing. So if you're ever flying and you've turned your nose of your ship, say that way, but your ship continues to move that way, what vertical stabilizers do is correct your course's orientation to slowly turn your ship to be heading in the way that it's pointed. So we do need some, and we're going to go with um, four uh, vertical stabilizers here. One on each of the engine tips here. That isn't quite aligned, so I'll just move it back by one. And we're going to use the um, vertical stabilizers here to snap the last of the, the wings that we want. So if I hit V with the atmospheric engineer report open in mass mode, it becomes a transparent screen here that I can see live. Now do bear in mind this number here that tells you how much more uh, lift you'll get by placing an element, I haven't found it to be accurate. So I place the element and that tells me what uh, performance I'll be getting from it. So I'm going to go as far down here it is. So it's adding a decent amount per wing. Now again, remember, uh, I want to go above what I'm aiming for because uh, as I add elements to the ship, it gets heavier and so the performance goes down. And the benchmark we are aiming for for our high altitude lift is 2 G's or above. So I'm just going to go a bit above so that when I uh, add all of the elements that I want to add, it won't dip me below 2 G's. Hmm, that isn't aligned, but that's okay. It can be a little off. Uh, no problem. So we're now above 2.34 G's of high altitude lift. So that'll end somewhere close to 2 G's, which is what we were aiming for. So again, high altitude lift, you want to be above 2 G's. Now, when it comes to low altitude lift, there's something else to consider. Low altitude lift is your hover engines and your vertical boosters. They are what catch you as you land and what lift you up when you take off. There is a talent that increases the height at which these engines kick in. On my main pilot character, my hover engines and my vertical boosters have height management of level four. So they kick in 40% sooner. So 40%, so if I'm landing, and we're gonna talk about landing as light as a feather, even when you're at your max capacity of weight, uh, if I'm landing, I'm going to be coming down on my air brakes and my vertical hover, uh, my vertical boosters and my hover engines are going to catch me and lower me down to the ground gently. If I don't have this talent here, max hover engine height management, the benchmark I want to aim for is roughly 2.5 Gs of low altitude lift so that in the less amount of a height that I'm able to slow myself down and, and have the hover engines catch me in, I can have more burst of power. When that height management skill comes in, I can afford to bring it down to about 2 Gs. So we're going to aim for about 2.5 Gs of low altitude lift and we're going to go with um, uh, flat hover engines uh, for our low altitude lift, not for vertical boosters. Because remember, this is a new player friendly ship and uh, hover engines are much cheaper to run than vertical boosters, though they are unable to operate in moons uh, and places without atmosphere. That doesn't really matter though, because this is simply an atmospheric shuttle. So again, the report isn't giving me exact readouts, but as I'm placing more elements, I'm seeing the score go up live. So I can already tell I need about five of these to get the results I want. So I'll go two at the front, one in the middle, and two to the side here. And don't worry about these being floating. I'm going to fill that space soon. So um, I'm at 2.93 Gs. Um, 
So it's going to be slightly more than what I need. It'll be about, say, 2.6, 2.7, I think, by the time we're done. But that's okay. The more, the better. And certainly when it comes to our atmospheric air brakes, the more really the better. We're going to... If you have, again, you know, good piloting talents here, your height management for your hover engines are good, you can get away with having um, a brake force of around 4 Gs as a minimum. I, for safety and comfort, like to sit at around 5 Gs. For this shuttle, we're going to go slightly above 5 Gs because um, our height management for our um, hover engines isn't uh, all that fantastic. So there's one that takes us to 1.62 Gs of atmospheric braking, 3.22, 4.81, and yeah, one more up here, I guess. Again, uh, at, currently it doesn't matter which way these arrows points, you cannot obstruct an air brake. So I'm above 6.38 Gs, it'll finish somewhere around six, I think, or probably a little more, which is great. I want it to be that high. Now uh, that the um, air brakes are pressed, uh, are placed. Sorry, let me move these hover engines a little further in. In fact, no, I'm gonna move them to the middle here. Actually, and align them by eye rather than by mathematical precision, which is my way of doing things. Right, that'll do for now. Okay, so we have uh, all of the benchmarks we want to hit on this page at least. So our max thrust is sitting at 1.38 Gs. Our brake force, and we want it to be above 1.3. Our brake force is about 6.38 Gs. And again, for a talent with, uh, for a character with zero piloting talents, you want it to be, you know, more than say 5.5. And this is really good amounts of braking force. I'm going to demonstrate how that's useful to us uh, when we take this for a test flight in, in, in a little bit. Low altitude lift is really good. We want it to be above say 2.5 for a character with no talents. And high altitude lift, we want it to be above two. So again, more than enough. We can probably even afford to take a few off, uh, which we will do uh, in, in a little bit. The other thing we need to add is adjusters so we can turn and pilot the ship. Now I am going with large everything here because this ship is designed to be uh, friendly for new players and new players aren't going to need a small uh, market shuttle forever. And so when it comes time to upgrading your ship, uh, all of these components are directly usable on the, the upgraded ships. Let's say if you build a Zamborak or, or something, you can use these exact elements on your new ship. So nothing is wasted, everything can be reused. And so we have up, down, left, right, and then because we have one on either side, we also have roll left and roll right, so we can keep the ship stable. And we basically want exactly the same thing on the other side. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. I mean, it does, but um, that's close enough for me. Perhaps you, you want to be a little more accurate than I am. So again, left and right down left and right pointing up and now when we pilot the ship we can keep it stable not rolling out of control much more easily now we need a seat from which to pilot the the, the craft let's go for a hovercraft seat because it's cheap and it makes no difference right now uh, is that, yeah that's fine and uh, for the script that I'm running, the Arcadio and Demacia script, I'm also going to add a data bank. But don't worry, if you don't have the Arcadio Demacia script, uh, you don't need a data bank. I will be making a guide video on that uh, next, actually. The next video on this channel is about Arcadio and Demacia's uh, script. So uh, let's place our fuel tank safely above our head. Uh, we're going to go with a medium atmospheric fuel tank. And that means when we are piloting, 
we have enough fuel for a decent amount of atmospheric flight. Um, so let's connect everything up. Our hover engines and our atmospheric engines both need atmospheric fuel. If we were using vertical boosters, um, we would need to connect it to a space fuel tank. If um, you want to, to fly in space, we'll talk about that as well. Um, the only places you will need a vertical booster rather than a hover engine for low atmosphere lift is on moons and uh, places without at atmosphere. And currently, uh, these bodies have very light gravity here, 0.1 g. So when I look at the atmospheric report and I see my low altitude lift is 2.74 g's, that's for Alioth, the planet with 1 g. So if I were to have low altitude lift by placing a, um, a vertical booster here, let me just place one for demonstration purposes briefly. Uh, you can see that I have 0.98 g's of low altitude lift uh, outside of atmosphere, so in space flight. And that's enough because that's m way more than enough to lift me off from a moon, say, with you know 0.1 g's of gravity. Uh, and then the other two benchmarks you want to hit for space flight is you want you know, about more than 1.25, 1.3 Gs of max thrust from your space engines, which is um, uh, going to be even easier for you to, to escape planet from if they're vertically placed rather than horizontally placed. And you want, say, more than 2.5 Gs or so of brake force from your uh, retro rocket brakes. So if we uh, quickly place a couple down, uh, for demonstration again as you can see as I'm placing them I get about 1g so I'd probably go with three of them uh, to get uh, 3g's of brake force in space so the benchmarks for space are you know anything above say 1.25 1.3g's of max thrust from your engines anything above say 2.5g's of brake force from your retro rocket brakes and you only need let's say half a g of vertical a low altitude lift from your vertical boosters because in the parts of the solar system where you'll need it uh, you won't need a full g of force so uh, let's go over these benchmarks again max thrust over 1.3 brake force over about 5.5 if you have no talents or if you have good talents you can get away with anything as low as four but for comfort anything above say five five and a half i'm comfortable with uh, max speed is respectable given that it's uh, carrying its max weight of capacity. Low altitude lift is fantastic. We want it to be above 2.5. So 2.74 is good. And high altitude lift, we want it to be above 2 Gs. Let's see what happens if we take away these bottom wings here. Yeah, 1.98 Gs. That's good enough for me. I'm happy with that. And our sustenation speed is the speed we need to be going at for our wings to be able to lift us. And that is respectable given uh, that we are again carrying our max capacity. So let's uh, fuel up the ship and take it for a little bit of a test flight. Uh, we are going to uh, run the Arcadio de Macia script. Again, a guide for that will be coming uh, as, as the next video on this channel. Uh, but if you don't have it, um, don't worry, fly it as per normal. It's skippable, it's a, quality, it's a fantastic quality of life. Uh, addition but if you don't have it you can skip it no problem at all and so ignore what I'm doing right now it's just related to the script I'm setting that I want to control the ship with my keyboard and right let's get in uh, the aircraft so we are carrying 50,000 liters of hematite which is weighing 252 tons in uh, cargo capacity and again remember this character has zero piloting skills so um, as you can see I can turn the ship very comfortably it's staying fairly even I can roll the ship left to right very comfortably because I have severely over um, uh, placed uh, adjusters so that I can roll left right turn left right and pitch up and down very comfortably. I'm gonna spool up my engines to maximum. They take a little while to kick in given that they're large atmospherics. I'm gonna disengage my air brakes 
And we are taking off. If you look here uh, on the left of the screen where it says Atmo 1, that's my fuel tank. So you can keep a live view on how much uh, fuel we are consuming. So um, it said that the max uh, speed of this ship while full was around 1100 kilometers per hour. I don't know if we'll hit that. Let's let's try. See if we we start uh, reaching it. Let's level off and, and speed up a bit. So our speed is going up nicely. We'll maintain our altitude. Uh, and I'm able to do that because of the the Arcadia and uh, Demacia, uh, Arcadia and Demacia script. Uh, again, if you don't have it, just don't worry. Try to manually maintain your altitude. And okay, it looks like we're going to speed up quite nicely. At around 900 kilometers an hour, I shall call it, although it is still climbing. So yeah, maybe eventually we will hit anywhere up to, say, uh, about a thousand kilometers per hour in speed, which is nice. It's a nice little uh, market shuttle. Uh, for speed. I'm now going to gain altitude a bit. I'm not going to turn and roll the ship because it's unsafe uh, to my mind. But if you recall, when we put on our vertical stabilizers, if I yaw the ship, if I just turn it, as you can see, our vertical stabilizers are exerting a lot of force and the direction of our ship, which is denoted by this green arrow, is being corrected to fit the direction in which the ship is pointing. And then when it turns straight again from our nose, the force stops being applied from our vertical stabilizers there. But we have a lot more turning to do, so I'm just going to slowly turn it. Now the alternative would be to roll your ship to the side and then pitch up, and use your wings to turn, but I've crashed way too many ships trying to do that. A quicker way actually might be to land the ship, orientate the way I want to orientate, and then um, uh, fly back, take back off. But uh, let's not do that for the moment. Uh, my speed is dropping low. And remember my sustenation speed, which is the speed I need to be moving at to keep flying with my wings, uh, was about 370. And my speed was falling to about 400. So I'm going to build up a little more speed. Now, I'm sure this is going to <laughs> cause a few people to cringe at the way I'm turning the ship. It is so slow, and I'm sure uh, the you know turning and rolling is so much quicker. Let's just do it a little bit here. Uh, yeah, as you can see, with our vertical wings, yeah, the turning was much faster. But I have cratered many a ship this way. So I, I like to play it slow and safe. If I need to do a 180 like what I've just uh, done right now, normally I land the ship and take back off from the ground. And when you're on the ground, under the power of your hover engines, you're able to turn freely. Um, it doesn't matter uh, which way you're pointing. You can turn your ship whichever way you want very easily. So let's head back and then let's... Uh, set our altitude to about one kilometer off the ground and I'm going to show you how to land now remember this character has zero piloting talents so it's basically worst case scenario for talents uh, but we've already uh, designed the ship to hit the benchmarks we needed bearing in mind our talents which are zero and so when I come to land, the ship is as heavy as it's going to ever be. We are not going to fly this ship um, with anything more than 250 tons of cargo. And so we have uh, the ship as heavy as it can be. And our pilot who built the ship and is operating the ship with uh, no talents at all. So the worst case uh, scenario for both weight and for pilot performance. And I'm going to show you how even under these uh, scenarios, these situations, you're able to land this ship as though it were as light as a feather because we have over six Gs of atmospheric brake force. And our atmospheric brake force is able to slow us down vertically as well as horizontally. So let's go roughly above where we want to land. Now, I'm not going to use the Arcadio Demacia script to land my ship automatically. What I'd be doing 
uh, if I was running without the script, I would be holding my finger down on control. Now with the script, uh, air brakes are a toggle, so I hit control once and it switches on and it remains on. But if that wasn't the case, I would just keep my finger on control. And as you can see from up here, our vertical fall speed is very safe. You would just have to judge that by eye if you didn't have the script running. And as you can see, we are falling down, gliding light as a feather, and our hover engines, because they are so much more powerful than what we technically need, were able to stop us and catch us along with the help of our air brakes straight away. Absolutely no danger of slamming into the ground. So even if you're landing on a busy market pad, uh, you're not going to be damaged, hopefully, normally, while you land, so long as you are able to get to above where you want to be and glide down safely on your air brakes. And then uh, I'm just going to land here. And that's the, um, uh, the ship built now. Uh, there are some other things here for instance a list of all elements on your ship is uh, placed here so atmospheric elements here space elements here and then common elements so elements common to both um you get a uh, here over here on this cog i can set things to uh, g's rather than newtons so if you're following this guide in terms of benchmarks and you're getting a readout in newtons, you can change it instead to, to, to G's here, which is um, much more uh, uh, useful in terms of, well, I've given you the numbers in G's, so you need to hear them in, in G's. And so, uh, for instance, here we have our um, airfoil list, which is our wings. And if we bring that down, it gives us a list of every wing uh, on our ship and then it'll tell us if they're obstructed so this wing here is about 5% obstructed but that's not a sufficient uh, number for me to, to worry about um, it's obstructed because the the other wings here are kind of getting in the way of its uh, plane if I if this orange circle oh, we can't see because of the, the foliage if the orange circle is obstructed in any way it'll uh, have a, a lower performance so uh yeah it's obstructed a little bit here as you can see it's clipping through i can fix that by um, moving it down or, or replacing wings not a big deal right now we have enough performance from that uh, that it doesn't matter so you can see a list of all of of your uh, engine parts so here are my uh, atmospheric engines here are my hover engines here's a fuel container here's my atmospheric brakes and it would tell you if they are obstructed or for whatever reason not working and that's basically the um, flight engineering report now i'm going to link to uh, sagacious's video in the description below um, i've used his uh, video build guide in, in designing my own ships that's extremely useful and uh, so again as per his video you fill your ship with what you want it to carry and then you aim for these kinds of scores for your um, ship's performance over 1.3 G's of max thrust, over 5.5 G's of brake, force in atmosphere, uh, over 2.5 G's of low altitude lift, about 2 G's of high altitude lift, and then you also want adjusters placed on the left and right of your ship, pointing up and down, and then one pointing left and right in the corners, both at the front and at the back, so that you can yaw and pitch left and right and you can also roll left and right because you have one adjuster to either side of your ship and that's it so if you like me find it important to earn your quanta in game uh, fairly and cleanly and uh, want to haul your ore to market properly as i do rather than uh, using the exploit then you're going to need a ship like this and hauling 50 kiloliters of hematite which is the heaviest tier one ore is is more than enough so every two trips to market basically is another territory scanner or a two trips to the market is a you know medium hauler or a, a light hauler perhaps because uh, they cost roughly about a one and a half two million quanta in, in in elements so in the description below you're going to get a list of all the elements that i used here 
And most importantly though, you're going to get a list of these numbers here. What you want to have in the atmospheric flight engineer readout in terms of G's. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Again, if you have, please do consider liking or subscribing or coming to hang out here with us on Twitch. Um, I am streaming three days a week, Monday, Thursday and Saturday from 7.30 p.m. London time. Until the next time, thank you for watching and bye for now.